Hello, what is going on with you today? I'm going to do another replay and this one is a bit of a special one as well. Uh, there we go. Okay, as you can see, it's a 2v2. Oh my god! It's going to be me and Sarav. I'll call you Sarav. Sarav. My very polite German friend. It's going to be me and him versus the Fuzz and Jordan MC. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be a two v two. There's some interesting tactics. I did say after um, Sarav beat me in the last match we played, I did say to him, you know, we we got to team up. You know, this is we're going to be pro team, pro team. So we teamed up. Um, after probably about half an hour of back and forth and just kind of waiting around for a little bit, we finally managed to get into a match which we were hosting. Now we're going to go into how this battle was played, well I will anyway. Um, 2v2, these two seemed a little bit uncooperative but we'll talk about that later. So 2v2, several different ways you can play this, I mean this was the third third or fourth 2v2 I've ever played. Um, there are kind of two ways you can play it really, um, or what I think two of the best ways to play it is either group your armies up together in a big blob and just destroy one of your um, one of your opponents um, quickly before the other one can get to them or um, you can try and split your forces so one of you goes very infantry dominant and then the other one goes very cav cavalry dominant you know, I wanted to support him a little bit um, with infantry so I did give him some really good infantry units so I got my first shock troopers uh, I've got some Naginata warrior monks, I've also got some uh, Naginata samurai, but then I also bring for him, where are they, in front of my general whip maybe, yeah, um, Kitana hero as well, which is a very, very versatile unit, very, very strong unit, I also bought some Nagi attendants just for soaking up some hits and charges, um, and then, because I wanted to go more cavalry orientated, so, I mean, he said, oh yeah, I want, should I bring a Yari Cav? He put a Yari Cav, I said, no, don't bring a Yari Cav. I'll control the cavalry, and then you just control the infantry. Because what you do then is that you split your priorities up between you. So that, um, I mean, if we both had cavalry and infantry, then we'd have to kind of micromanage between them. But, I mean, if you're solely focused on one, um, one component of an army, then you'll perform a lot better, because that that's all, all you're giving your attention to. So, I mean, if he goes all infantry out, that's all he has to focus on, and it's nice and simple. You can be there all the time, whilst my opponent over here, or sorry, what his opponent over here is, you know, darting about, focusing on lots of different um, units at once. Whereas his is just all infantry based, so he can perform a lot better. So he doesn't have many processes thinking around in his head. So I said to him, you know, I'll give you some, I'll give you some infantry, um, some pretty strong infantry, you know, and then I'll bring up the cav. I was planning on give, bringing more cavalry. But um, I just wanted to give him, you know, some good support. Thinking back at it now, I probably would have just given him a katana hero. But I mean, this is still a very, very good, very, very good kind of strong little unit that he can tag up with. Um, and then I wanted to just go all cavalry out, but you know, as I said, I wanted to give him some strong units so he can just dick his side. Um, but yeah, I got uh, two hammers and a, two katanas. So. They are just a good little steamrolling unit because what I was planning on doing is that I go cavalry heavy, he goes infantry heavy, he goes and engages his guy, I charge my cavalry over because they're quick and he engages and I come around the back and we just break him completely because he, he was going to use the same tactic as he played against me with his, um, I think his monks, yeah his monks and his nodachi, he was going to play the same tactic but... Um, you know, with that added effect of having lots of cavalry in from behind, it would have been devastating. So, that's my army. He bought a uh, matchlock samurai. I don't really see much of these guys, but he bought some. Uh, some nodachi, which is very strong. He bought some katana samurai, which is very strong. He bought some naginata warrior monks, which are also very strong. And his general, pretty nice. He's got some bow general. General melee attack charge, pretty good. Um, <coughs> we shall now go into the 
opponent's army to go to my guy first. Um, he had a really weird army, I'm not going to lie. So we've got some bow warrior monks, we've got some fire cav, um, some hand mortars. This was the first time I played these guys, and I thought they literally just threw hand grenades, but I turned out to be totally wrong. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough this morning. Uh, Tetsubu warrior monks, they're pretty deadly. Katana hero, building the same as me. Um, mounted gunners, mounted dicks in other words, and his general. He also has some, um, I think, bandits and wacko raiders up here somewhere, um, which I'll soon discover. Now, Sarov's opponent is fielding some, <coughs> some Modachi, some Naginata samurai, Naginata warrior monks. Um, all these guys look deadly, don't they? Tetsubu warriors, with their clubs it looks like. Uh, Naginata warrior monks again, uh, katana, marathon monks, and valley of death. That's, that's quite a fearsome sounding general. A lot of generals seem to look the same though. Oh, my one looks awesome. Anyway, so yeah, and that's his general. Um, I think he might have one or two other units as well, but that's pretty much it. So, what we planned, this was the same map as well which me and uh, Sir have played before. I was down here and he just literally hid in these woods. So straight from the off, I merge my army with his. This is what you want to kind of do. The, the only problem with merging your armies together is that you can get wrapped around. You know, people can flank you easily with two armies, but you're a lot stronger, you're there in numbers, you have presence, um, so your morale should be stronger and you'll be a much larger force to be reckoned with. And also it will scare them as well, it will scare their troops a lot. Um, so this is the point where he starts to fire at me with bandits, this is the first time I ever saw bandits in a game. Um, they seem pretty awful, if I'm honest. Um, but he started to pick away at my, uh, my cavalry, so I saw, oh hang on a minute, they're bow units, these guys are sword units, um, let's have a rape sash. So, charge on him. Absolute slaughter. The worst isn't. The worst is sort of come. Ouch! 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 Those are the hand mortars, and that's how devastating they are. He he pretty much broke his own men as well. So they're causing havoc over there. I pretty much just routed both of them. Um, <coughs> but yeah, over here, if I just like pause it for a minute, just so I don't miss it. Um, uh, what was it? I forgot what I was going to say now. Well, that's rather annoying. Hmm. Yeah, this is it. I didn't merge my army fully with his. What I did is I kind of put them at the back as a support. Because that way, um, when he gets engaged with his opponent, I can, you know, whatever kind of area needs to be addressed, I can just, you know, address units to it. You know, I can put units towards it. Um, or if it's all going well, I can just bring my guys around the flank and just steamroll straight through. So that was the idea behind that. When you first deploy as a 2v2, always spawn right next to each other as well. Never, like they did, spawn on one side of the map and another one on the other. You want to be as close together as possible because um, that way it's less likely for this sort of a tactic to be used where we're basically just going to gang up on this one opponent. It's a lot less likely that they'll gang up on you because um, obviously your, both of your armies will be there. You know, it's pretty much a given. You should always spawn as close as you can. So. At this point, I just kind of saw that his army had no spears whatsoever. Um, the only counter he had was his fire cav, and against all of this cavalry, you know, he's he's not really going to be going anywhere. So I just charged them all in. And here come his uh his hand mortars. Ouch! It's not good. It's not good at all. I'll just see if I can change my sound settings. Uh, oh, they were low anyway. Okay, so pretty much I see that all of his, you know, he hasn't really got any spear units, so I just charge full on in. You know, it's pretty pointless uh, bringing over my army. I might as well just go for him. He's got some mounted dicks, but pretty much doing nothing in their pink armour. Um, and very literally, with four, oh wow, with four units, I just steamrolled my opponent. 
with just four cavalry units. It was, it was quite funny, really. And he had loads of um, he had loads of quite expensive units as well. I think hand mortars are quite expensive. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I mean to have two or three hero units, bow monks, wacko raiders, fire cav. You know, I think they're quite expensive units. I haven't really looked at some of them, but I can guess they would be. So the engagement starts. Um, so pretty much just a charge. Ooh, ow, ow. How did they? How did they almost break? Oh, there you go. Obviously, that Banzai would have given him a lot of morale. Um, and now, now it's a bit of monk on monk action. You've got some no dachi or no dachi, and now it's just going to turn into a big grind out match because um, he's got some very tough units. I'm not going to lie. Some wacker raiders, some good stats there. Wacker raiders look like they're wearing pajamas half the time. And he puts his general to stand and fight, he's good, he brings a leadership general, that's what you want. Um, Sarav, so I'm not sure if he's got stand and fight, but I would fully recommend it, it is really overpowered. And this is the point where I just, as I said, you know, you assess the situation and you address units where they need to be addressed. So I've literally now just come around the side and I've flanked him. Now is there you go, concerned being attacked by the flank, that's going to start to have a negative impact. I just go straight for his general, try to take his general out as quick as possible, then the rest of his army will break because the leadership general, when they break, you know you've pretty much lost. At this point, I don't know why for some reason, I don't know what happened here, it seemed to have glitched out, but um, all of his units did actually completely rout, I think. I'm pretty sure they completely routed. Um, well, they might not have actually, I'm not sure. But, I mean, I dealt such, so much damage to him. I mean, even if this isn't glitched out, and this really is how the battle panned out, um, you know, I just ditched my cavalry anyway because once we're finished with his ally, we'll just come over and destroy him as well. So at this point, again, it's a little bit of a grind out match. Some nice blood effects there. Ouch. And. We just, it's a cut down sesh, pretty much. Um, but I mean, this opponent is holding out very strongly. Very strong. I think we're beginning to see some cracks. Yep, his general in the middle is beginning to crack a little bit. And he's shattered. And his two units should now follow, but he has got some Tetsubi warrior monks, and they'll just, well no, just warriors. They should hold on for a while. No, there you go. Everyone is now broken. We successfully mad managed to clamp down uh, Sarav's opponent, shut him down uh, fairly, fairly well. We contained him a little bit, um, and that just kind of shows you the kind of tactic you can use with 2v2. So I definitely recommend um, splitting uh, types of units between each other. So, you know, as you saw, Sarav went more infantry based, and I went more cavalry based. Um, that way, you can focus on it instead of micromanaging cavalry whilst micromanaging infantry. It definitely splits the responsibilities up, and um, it's just a lot easier to focus on one type of unit at once. Um, also, there's another. Another tip as well, keep your, in deployment phase, keep your men as close as you can together. That way you have the option to merge your armies or run supports. And it also counters um, uh, ganks as well, like, you know, ganging up. It also counters ganging up on uh, your fellow ally. Because they're not going to gang up if one of you are right there, are they? It's just not going to work. So that's pretty much how it panned out. Um... I feel sorry for the fuzz because Jordan MC did a, I'm not going to lie, he did a pretty poor job. He bring a weird, weird army. Um, but they really should have both stuck closer together and they would have had much more chance. I mean, with the close proximity of me and Sarav, um, you know, his hand, his hand mortars could have done pretty well. Um, and also he had some good, uh, good hero units which my cavalry could just wipe clean with. So, I mean, if they stuck together, they would have had a much, much better chance.
I mean, it was a good match, and I enjoyed it. So, we'll go down into this. Uh, so me, Shock Troopers did well. Uh, Yari, all of my cavalry did exceptionally well, because obviously, you know, they pretty much took out my opponent's whole army, just the four of them. Um, Katana Lord did meh, meh. Pretty much, it's, from there on, it's pretty much meh. You know, I was I was more or less running in support for Sarav than, um, you know, actually doing anything. You know, it was mainly Sarav who did most of the work. I was just running in support. The Fuzzers, uh, Warrior Monks did very well. Spears of Shinzgetsa, eh, they did alright. <coughs> Valley Swords did pretty well. They did well. The Monks, Baka Raiders did very well. I mean, see, his... The Fuzz's army did very, very well. It's just unfortunate that um, he wasn't really backed up by his ally like Sarav was. I, as as I've said about four times now, you know, I was pretty much just running in support for Sarav. Um, so his Nodachi did very well as always. Naginata Warrior Monks did well. Um, yeah, I mean, he didn't even have to use some of his. Some of his units, the matchlock, I think only, yeah, they managed to rip out 62 men. These guys, <laughs> they he barely had to even use them. So, there we go. Fire Cav, they did the most damage. Pretty much all the kills you see here on um, Jordan MC's side is just, it's just my cavalry. It's already killed pretty much. See, that's, this is why you always bring spear units. You don't know what the opponent's going to bring. That just allowed me to steamroll through his through his army, really. So I hope you've enjoyed the 2v2. Um, I'm looking forward to doing another one with Sarab soon. And I will also be doing a battle commentary with one of my Swedish friends soon um, on skirmishing. Hopefully we'll do a skirmishing battle. Because I haven't really done many skirmishing battles. So, yeah, look out for that one. I hope you enjoyed the battle and have a good day.